Guest is Davy Jones, candidate for sheriff. Davy, pull that mic a little closer and uh, say good morning to everybody. Good morning. How you doing? Ed? You know, I I can't go without doing a shout out myself because John said American Legion. Uh, I'm a member of the American Legion Post 14, and we're always looking for members here in Martinsburg. And if you, How do you sign up? You can reach out to Charles Stanley or myself, um, and uh, we can get you signed up. Uh, and uh, we can you know, we always. We always like to have new members. Our members are sl sadly dwindling, obviously, due to age and illness. And are there any time. qualifications to joining the American Legion? Yes, you have to have uh, served overseas, mm -hmm. uh, and war usually it's wartime. Uh, Charles knows a whole lot more about membership and stuff than I do. You can also join online uh, on their main page. The, Very the, good. Davey, let's talk about your candidacy for sheriff. This is the third time you'll be running for this office. Before we get into the reasons why you're running, refresh us on the history of Davy Jones. What brought you to this point? Well, I was a, I'm a veteran, and uh, I believe everybody should serve, and I've done so as a veteran and also as a reserve deputy. I've, uh, uh, for years, put in hundreds of hours a year uh, as a reserve deputy, uh, doing uh, traffic, assisting our deputies, saving money, because it's all volunteer, we don't get paid. Uh, but it saves the, the county uh, and the department money because it's our time and mm -hmm. it's something we're doing to reserve that reserve that deputies don't have to do. Uh, we also do s school functions uh, so that we're not tying up a deputy's time at those school functions, provide security and traffic. And uh, we save, the, we save the, the county quite a bit of, of money due to the time. And we're always looking for members. Well, I'm no longer a member. I had to resign uh, to run for sheriff. Uh, but Glenn Stickle is the chief, and you can reach out to him. Uh, and if you were interested in joining, want to serve the reserves, uh, there's uh, some minimum qualifications. But it's it's always good. The people are good to work with, and you get to uh, work with the deputies in the department itself. How many years did you serve in the reserves for the deputies? A little over three. Three. Yeah. Will you go back if you're unsuccessful in your bid for sheriff? Will you go back to that again? I am hoping so, yes, because I, I enjoyed it. I enjoy serving the county and mm -hmm. the community. And your decision to run for sheriff again, and, and if it's any different this time than it was the previous times? Well, it's pretty much the same. Uh, I, I I believe that uh, I'd like to, to to lead the department in a, in a direction that we need to go, leveraging IT and technology, because uh, I have 30 years of IT experience. And it, it's it also the budget's very important. Uh, you know, we as the citizens have to pay taxes, and that those taxes go for the budget of the police department, or the sheriff's department in this case, right? So mm -hmm. we need to make sure we leverage our technology, use all the resources effectively, and be creative so that we're not over exceeding our budget and people have to pay higher taxes. The most important thing is, of course, you know, sheriff. Uh, deputy sheriffs. We need deputy sheriffs. We always need deputy sheriffs. So we're always hiring, and we have to pay those competitive salaries. So if we can be creative in other areas, we can pay the deputies more money. And I think leveraging technology is a big key to that. Uh, I remember uh, last January when uh, Sheriff Harmon came in. This was shortly after the the whole Carrie Harmon incident had occurred, and you came in in support of Nate. You sat in the seat actually where John Gilstrap is sitting about a, about a year ago. Uh, tell me your thoughts of the Harmon administration uh, prior to the incident, so to speak, and how things were running in Berkeley County prior to that. I think I think uh, Sheriff Harmon did a really good job. He was right on track with what what we pretty much discussed during campaigning because you know as candidates we all discussed with each other you know sure. you know things that we would like to do obviously and then we listened to the you know when we're at events and stuff and i believe he's on the right track uh, unfortunately personal issues got him sidetracked and you know and like i have always said you know if the republican primary whoever wins the republican primary we have a duty to kind of you know support them even if we ran against them it, you know you have a duty to support your party right so mm -hmm. But you know, you also can bring more to the table. And after that election, the interesting thing is that, that Sheriff Harmon reached out to me about that and asked opinions on different topics. And I gave him my opinions, and he actually ran with some of them. So. And then your thoughts on from that moment forward until ultimately 
the resignation of the sheriff, Davey? Well, I'm not privy to the you know the real info because you know how it always goes, right? The the real truth is always somewhere in the middle because mm -hmm. there's always two sides to everything. Uh, but I, it's unfortunate, uh, you know what what happened to him, I guess. But you know I'm not part of that decision making, and and I wasn't uh, you know in his shoes, so I can't speak for him. Bill, yeah, uh, good morning, David. Uh, when you ran in 2020, uh, you made a statement that caught several of us by surprise, and you said that should a law be passed by the legislature that you do not agree with, that you would not enforce it. Well, Which, let me correct you on that. Okay, sure. It's okay. not agree with. It's okay. what's legal. Okay. Okay, because we all know that there are laws that are passed all the time that are unconstitutional. And as a veteran and as the sheriff and any politician, you always take an oath to defend the Constitution. Can you give an example of that? Red flag laws, perfect example. Uh, here, here you've passed a law where uh, somebody can make a statement to the judiciary and say, hey, I'm scared of this person and they have guns. And then law enforcement has to go out and confiscate those guns until they have a trial, right? Well, we all know that violates the Second Amendment, right? And it violates the due process, right? Because they're, they're losing their property, right, before they go to court. And, and <laughs> so there's no due process, right? And what it does, it does two very dangerous things. It puts law enforcement in danger for going out there right, and taking somebody's property, especially guns, right? People don't want their guns taken. How are they going to defend their life and their liberty, right? And two, it puts the citizen in danger, right? Because the citizen themselves could possibly, and, and it, this, this happened, matter of fact, I think it was that year uh, in 2020 where a, a citizen in Maryland was killed by law enforcement for them to go in to take his guns because they came at 2 a.m. in the morning, right? So those laws are not constitutional. So it's a, it, it, because the sheriff is the primary law enforcement officer in the county, he needs to review this and make sure he does the correct thing, not show up at 2 a.m. in the morning to take somebody's guns, who you know is going to be armed, right? You need to show up in the middle of the day and have a conversation with the person. You know, these laws shouldn't even pass constitutional muster. How does a red flag law differ from a family protection order or personal protection order where the, the guns are taken away from an individual? Well, the, the family protection order requires almost immediate court hearing. I think it's 48 hours, I believe. Now, they can, I, th I believe they can uh, postpone that uh, depending on circumstances. But it requires that really quick due process. And even those are shady. They're, th those are, you know, they're, they're a little on the iffy side. Because, again, you're putting law enforcement and the citizen in danger going to confiscate somebody's firearms without due process, especially at 2 a.m. in the morning. They well, yeah, let, let's take over the 2 a.m. That was a mistake. I agree with that. But we just, but that does not really impact the, the philosophy behind something. Uh, so you would, and we do not have red flag logs in, 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 in West Virginia, so therefore it's kind of a mute point. Right, exactly. Uh, but the way that you, I remember you saying it last time, if there had, and red flag logs were been discussed at that time, that you said if they had passed, you would not enforce them if you had been sheriff. Yeah, I would, I would not okay. enforce it. Now, I, I don't want to say 100% would not enforce them because, again, every circumstance is different, right? Mm -hmm. But you've got to approach it with a different kind of mindset, right? You, you're, as sheriff, your number one priority is the safety of the citizens, right? So you don't want to put your deputies and the citizens in danger by, any, by actions you may or may not take, right? So it, when you, and I know this was, well, first I guess we should find out if you still espouse that position that you would not enforce any law you regarded as unconstitutional. If it is not unconstitutional, well, I won't I will not enforce it, but of course I'll have to, you know, con consult legal. I would, you know, yeah, what is this obviously. my point is you would not be making this decision based on, well, I'm looking at that that seems unconstitutional to me. I I assume you would uh consult the county attorney or Correct. someone in that is Right. Yeah, you can't that. just arbitrarily say oh, I'm not going to do that. that's not your job right? right your job is to enforce the law Correct. but you all your job is also to protect the citizen 
and your deputies. I mean, it's very, you put, yeah. you're putting not just a citizen, but you're putting your deputies in danger. Mm-hmm. And we don't want that. Yeah. Mr. Gilstrap. So <clears throat> an election for a voter is a two-pronged decision, especially when you're running against an incumbent. One is, why should I elect this guy? And the other one is, why should I fire that guy? When there's, when there's an incumbent. So I don't want to turn the conversation negative necessarily, but I mean, that's, that's the elephant in the room. So um, Sheriff Blair, you look at his resume, state trooper, all of that. Why, why should the voters choose you over him? Well, I don't know Mr. Blair personally, but we have over 90 Facebook friends in common. So obviously he knows the same people I do. He's obviously a very good guy. You know, but I he, have 2000 Facebook friends and I wouldn't recognize most of them. <laughs> that's, that's true. But Mr. Blair has been retired for almost 20 years and hasn't been in law enforcement. I, I've been working with the community for, for many years and it's been recent until I just had to resign. Uh, I have I'm a veteran. I have military experience. I believe leading from the front. Again, I can't speak on Mr. Blair, my opponent's, you know, position because I really don't know Mr. Blair. But I certainly won't say anything negative about him because I don't know him. But if we have that many friends in common, you know, there's, you know, he's obviously a good guy. Uh, me, I, I'm current. I'm current with law. I've worked with the department. I've worked with the deputies. I've worked with the community. Uh, I, I know technology. I know we need to leverage technology. And like I say, I'm a veteran. I know you got to lead from the front. You can't lead sitting in your office. <laughs> You know, so uh, do you feel that he has been leading from his office? Well, see, I don't know. I mean, they, they actually, I mean, you've been in the you've, you've been in the department. Well, right? not since he's been okay. sheriff. So because he, you know, he start he was uh, sworn in in January. I had to resign before I could even file. I see. Right. So I'm not I, don't, I really don't know a lot about what he is or is not doing in the department. But again, I'm also a man of the people. I believe in getting out there and doing the work if you want a job. And he was given the job. Yeah. Did you apply for that job? I did, and that was not even interviewed. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I was going to ask you about that process, Davey. If uh, you signed up, but you never did, you, you never received a call or an interview. Any never sort. received a call, and they only interviewed three people. Right, right. Uh, let's talk about the uh, sheriff's office. You mentioned about leading from uh, in front, and the sheriff's position is uh, uh, primarily an administrative position. There, obviously, they give you a gun, so. You're, you're expected to know what you're doing with it, but your job is mostly administrative, as I'm, as it's been explained to me, Davey. That is correct, yeah. yes. So what, are, what are the specific administrative duties of the sheriff? Well, the big thing, of course, is the budget, right? You've got to make sure that you're working within your budget and you have the resources you need to do the job. Have you prepared budgets before? Oh, yeah, I've, I've prepared. I, I used to work for the Department of State, and mm-hmm. I had to do the budget for our IT department. And, and tell me how much uh, experience you had doing that. Uh, every year you had to do it. And it had to meet, of course, federal guidelines. So you had all of these parameters that you had to make sure that you were spot on with or your budget would get denied. And then you've got to resubmit your budget. And, and how, what was the size of the budget dollar-wise? Probably were close to $2.5 million. And how many years did you do that? Uh, Twelve. Twelve years. And how recent was that? Uh, I would say about eight years ago. Okay, very good. And, and the other duties of the sheriff? The big time, it, you want to make sure that the, your morality is there for your for your deputies, right? You want to make sure that they understand the Constitution. You want to make sure that you reach out to the community because that's a big thing too, right? We got this big disconnect between citizens and law enforcement, and one of the things that 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 Sheriff Harmon did that that we had discussed uh, previously during the campaign was the the community day. Right. You know, you bring in, you create, you know, you create this event, you bring the community in, you get them, can, you know, talking to the deputies and they feel comfortable with the deputies and understand that we're there to serve them, not not designed to, to create tyranny like, you know, the media, mainstream media tries to make it out. A very important job is to be the sheriff is to be this middleman, right, between the community and law enforcement. And if he's not doing that, if he's just sitting in his office and just, you know, working on one thing and not the other, then we have this big disconnect. And that, and to me, that's very important, is this connection between the community and the citizen. It's the re- reason why I've gone old school in my campaign. 
I have my truck, I have a big billboard on the back of my truck. I'm going to be driving around, you know, and, and meeting people and talking with people. And if you see the, if you see me, don't hesitate. Come out, talk to me. If you have questions, I'm always, you know, willing to answer them. And I've got this little thing. If you take a picture of my truck and put it on Facebook, I'll give you a shirt and hat. <laughs> if you check my website or Facebook page for details. Davey, I, is, how many how many deputies uh, do you think would be the right amount for Berkeley County? And uh, if so, do you need to add to get to that total or subtract? I think we probably need about two more. I'm not sure how many we have right now because it fluctuates. And again, I'm not uh, I'm not behind that desk. Mm -hmm. uh, but we need to make sure that we can cover all shifts and we can and we can cover uh, the areas that we need to cover based on based on call logs. Uh, I know that we need to, to put some patrols out on 81 because 81 is just ridiculous, you know. And even if it's just somebody sitting there, even if it's just a car sitting there, you know how that cars just slow people down. Mm -hmm. We have to do something because 81 is just a big hazard. It's a death trap. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, Facebook two or three times. You also mentioned mainstream media. Uh, it sounds like you're not a big fan of mainstream media, the way you said it. No, I'm not really. I mean, just like Trump isn't a big fan of mainstream media, because <laughs> okay. we all know they have you know their agenda. You know, unlike you know your community media, right? They they focus on the facts and, and reality, where you know the mainstream wants to focus on an agenda. I'm sorry, who fo who fo uh, face uh, who focuses on the facts? You said uh, the the local community media, local community, yeah. okay. like WRNR. You know, we focus yeah. on facts, okay. right? Thank you, Mr. Gilstrap. <laughs> We want to fight against tyranny. I just want to equalize the equation here. We want to fight against a, a tyrannical government. And it, from where I sit, the very definition of tyranny, going back to not enforcing um, laws that, that you or your department, the department's lawyers, feel are unconstitutional, notwithstanding having been passed by an elected body, which is the, the, the body in whom we have entrusted that very task. And then to have a single mid-level department say, well, no, we're not going to do that. How is that fundamentally different than that same department making up a new law that they think should be enforced and enforcing that anyway absent the mandate of of the legislature i mean that's the the very definition of tyranny is making stuff up right and and, and enforcing well, the definition of tyranny is oppressing the citizens well right? who's, one man's you oppression can, right, is can, another man's you can make it up right but here you've got politicians that if they pass those laws that they know are unconstitutional they're violating the oath that they took right you really think they think they're unconstitutional when they pass them well they they know we, we all know if it's something that's con it's constitution is black and white. Isn't that you, you what kinda, courts are for? You kind of know what that, well, that's what the Supreme Court is for. And they usually don't pass muster in the Supreme Court if they get taken to the Supreme Court. But in this instance, I don't mean not enforcing it because I feel like I'm not enforcing it, right? That's why you have lawyers on your team. That's why you have the county commission. You go and you, you discuss this with these people. What do we do in this circumstance? Here, obviously, it's a mute point because in West Virginia, we believe in liberty, right? The, the mountain state, you know. So it, it, we would hope that our politicians that we elect are not going to pass any kind of oppressive law. But again, it comes down to the sheriff's department to defend the citizens' constitutional rights and it's not just the sheriff, right? The sheriff, you know, has lawyers in the county, in the county, the county commission, you know, so you have to, you don't just arbitrarily make a decision on your own. I'm not doing that. But right? more and you more. You've got to discuss it with, with, with the rest of the, the politicians, the lawyers and the people and make sure that that's not an oppressive thing. Like you say, we don't want tyranny. Well, you don't, you have, you don't get tyranny as long as you're discussing these things with more than one person. It's not just one person making that decision. Which is why discussions like this are important. I mean, West Virginia is clearly a deep red state. And, and as we found in the legislature, we've discussed on this show and on, on the station a number of times, we're getting more into social issues and that aren't really relevant yet. So there, there are a lot of litmus tests that are going on about people's... Uh, 
uh, philosophical stances on issues that aren't yet relevant but may become relevant, which is why this is a, an important discussion to have. So where where do people think where do people stand principally on issues? So let me ask you this, and we're getting short on time, and I don't I don't want to dominate here. Why is it important? How is it relevant? That a, why is the sheriff's department even a partisan position? If if we're just enforcing laws, if the job of the sheriff's department is to enforce laws and collect taxes, right? Why is it even a partisan position? In my opinion, I don't think any poli any position should be partisan. I'm not a big party person, right? I think you should be electing candidates on their stance, their ideology, not just because they came from a certain party. Because we all know that someone will say they're one party and they don't even have the ideology of that party, right? They have the opposite. You also find people that get elected as one party and then change parties, right? So I'm not a big partisan person anyway. I think you need to do your research, look at the candidate, see if their ideology matches yours, and then vote for them. So that's where I stand on you know, party affiliation. George Washington said it, right? He says, if we're going to be ruined, we're going to be ruined by parties. So, Davey, I've got one minute left. Use it to talk to our audience and tell them why they should vote for you for sheriff. Yeah, I, you know, I'm a man of the people. I am actually looking and seeking for this job as sheriff to serve the community. Unlike my opponent who was previously on a, a, another radio show and did an interview, said they didn't see themselves ever in this position. They weren't seeking this. I am. I wasn't given the job. I, mean, I wasn't appointed for it. I'm looking to serve. I'm actually going out there and doing the work uh, as a good politician should do. And I am willing and able to answer any question. I have my Facebook page, Davy Jones for West Virginia. I have my website, which is uh, vote the number four Davy Jones mm -hmm. uh, dot org. You'll see me driving around in what I call my truck is I call it the Beast. What color is it? <laughs> it's silver. silver. So you can't miss it. It's got a giant billboard on the back of it with my face on it. <laughs> and I'm doing this campaign old school. I'm staying within a budget because I can't possibly expect the community to think that I can handle the budget of the department if I can't handle my own campaign budget. Mm -hmm. So no big giant, you know, signs everywhere, no radio ad commercials, you know, every five minutes, you know, you'll see it all, all old school. Uh, and just like, I don't know if you've watched Back to the Future, uh, when the mayor was campaigning, he had this truck with the PA on it. My truck actually has a PA system built into it too. Oh, please so don't do that in my neighborhood. <laughs> Your neighborhood's gated. He couldn't get in there. <laughs> Bill's ha Bill has a moat around his property. You can't drive over unless he puts the drop With down. alligators. With alligators. Sharks, too. Right? Davey, good to see you again. Always good to be on the show, Rob. Have a good day, sir.